solve problem 4.8 from microelectronic circuits, 8th edition by Cedra and Smith. Assuming the diodes in the circuit of figure 4.8 are ideal, utilize Thevenin's theorem to simplify the circuits and thus find the values of the labeled currents and voltages. So for a brief review, I put some steps up here on how to find a Thevenin equivalent circuit. So let's start with that. First, we need to short all voltage sources and diodes and open all current sources. So we see we have a voltage source here of five volts, and I'm just gonna go ahead and connect that to the ground over here, right? Because we can assume that this five volts here is connected to the ground here by virtual short. So then we have a 20 kilo ohm resistor here. We have a node here. We have another 20 kilo ohm resistor here. I'm sorry for my poor drawing. Okay, now we're going to short this diode. So just draw a wire. We have another node here of 20 kilo ohms, and that's grounded. And then we just have the voltage node that we're trying to find. Okay, now we can find equivalent resistances. So this 20 kilo ohm on the right is pretty isolated. It's grounded on a wire by itself, so we can't really do anything with that. However, we can observe that these two 20 kilo ohm resistors on the left here are in parallel, right? They share the same two nodes from each other. So therefore, we can find an equivalent resistance there, and it's going to be equal to 20 kilo ohms in parallel with 20 kilo ohms, right? And so that's equal to 1 over 20 kilo ohms plus 1 over 20 kilo ohms to the power of negative 1, and that's equal to 10 kilo ohms. Whenever both resistors are the same value, it's essentially just half. Okay, now we can find V Thevenin. That's going to be equal to the original input voltage of 5 volts multiplied by R Thevenin, 10 kilo ohms, divided by the original input resistance. That's going to be the resistance that is immediately seen by the voltage source. So here, it's 20 kilo ohms. It's this resistor right here. And so that gets us 2.5 volts. So now that we have all the information we need, we can fully redraw the circuit as it's Thevenin and equivalent. So you're always going to start with your ground, followed by your new Thevenin voltage source, 2.5 volts followed by your Thevenin resistance of 10 kilo ohms. And that completes this part of the circuit. This is all the Thevenin stuff we did. So now we can continue with the rest of the circuit. So we can add the diode back in, and we can bring this resistor back in of 20 kilo ohms. And then here's our voltage node. And here's the current we're trying to find. So now this becomes just a normal ideal diode analysis problem. So you need to determine if the diode is forward biased or reverse biased. So take a look at the voltage coming into the anode and exiting the cathode. So entering the anode, we have 2.5 volts and exiting we have zero volts because we can see that resistor is grounded, right? So we have 2.5, zero, high to low. Therefore, this diode is conducting in the forward biased region, and it's going to act like a short, short circuit. So now we can calculate the current. It's going to be I is equal to 2.5 volts minus 0 volts. This is notable analysis. Divided by that equivalent resistance, so we have a 10 kilo ohm and a 20 kilo ohm resistor in series. So we will add those up in the denominator. And then let me get my calculator. You should get 0 0.083 milliamps. And that's 0 0.083 milliamps. I will rewrite that. So now, how can we find our voltage at this node? Well, there's a couple ways. Right, we could just use resistor division. So that would be V equals our source voltage, 2.5 volts, multiplied by uh, 
this resistance here, 10 kilo ohms, it's the resistance before the node, multiplied or divided by, excuse me, the equivalent resistance across the whole circuit, 30 kilo ohms. Or no, I'm sorry, it should be 20. You want it to be the resistance observed by the 20 kilo ohms. This 10 kilo ohms will take some voltage and the remainder will be taken by the 20 kilo ohms. And we want to find the voltage taken right before the 20 kilo ohms. So this should be 20. And that gives us 1.67 volts. And there's a couple other ways to do this. You know, if we did KVL and we walked up from the circuit, then we could say V is also equal to zero volts plus I times R. So it would be the current that we already found, 0 0.083 milliamps multiplied by 20 kilo ohms. And if we double check our work there, yep, it gets us the same answer, 1.67 volts. So a bit of an involved problem, but let's move on to the next part. Right, let us do this problem now, part B. And you may be wondering why we're even doing this. Well, think about this diode. If I asked you to determine if it's forward biased or reverse biased, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? You have these two voltage sources, but you don't really know how much voltage is being consumed at these. So it's, it's really hard to tell what the voltage is at these two nodes. So that's a big reason why this would be helpful. So let's go ahead and start drawing our equivalent circuit. So on the left side, we have this ground with a 20 kilo ohm, and another 20 kilo ohm, and we have a diode here, but we're gonna short it for now. We have another 10 kilo ohm here, and we're going to short this voltage source. Short that voltage source. And we have another 10 kilo ohm here. Okay. Now we'll find all equivalent resistances. So we kind of see like this is kind of parallel with each other. This should be a ground source too. So I'm going to call this R1 and this is going to be R2. So R1, which is the equivalent resistance on the left side, will be 20 kilo ohms in parallel with 20 kilo ohms. And as I said in the last problem, when it's two of the same valued resistors in parallel, it's just half of it. So therefore, R2 is equal to 10 kilo ohms parallel with 10 kilo ohms, which is 5 kilo ohms. All right, and I'll also call this V1 and V2. So V1, which is the feminine voltage for the left side of the circuit, will be the input voltage, so 5 volts, multiplied by the feminine uh, resistance, which is 10 kilo ohms for this side divided by the input resistance, which is the resistance observed by the voltage source. So that's 20 kilo ohms here. All right, so V1 is equal to 2.5 volts. And then V2 will be equal to the input voltage on the right side, which is three volts, multiplied by the Thevenin resistance, R2, five kilo ohms, divided by the input resistance, which is 10 kilo ohms for this case. So V2 is 1.5 volts. Now we can redraw this circuit. So hopefully these Thevenin equivalences are making sense. And it can be challenging at first. And I may make a video in the future going more in detail with these equivalencies, but there are plenty of resources you can find online as well. So let's start with the left side, R1 and V1. So that's gonna be our Thevenin voltage source. We always start with the Thevenin voltage, 2.5 volts. Then our Thevenin resistance, R1. Then we have the diode. Then we have our other Thevenin resistance, five kilo ohms. Then we have our second voltage source, 
1.5 volts and then ground. Now, as you can probably see, this is going to be a lot easier to analyze. So, is the diode forward biased or reverse biased? Well, we see that from the anode, it's observing 1.5 volts. From the cathode, it's observing 2.5 volts. So we're going from low to high. Therefore, this diode is reverse biased, right? Because we have 1.5 and 2.5. So this is going to behave like an open circuit. And because this diode is reverse biased, we can immediately state that the current is zero. We can immediately state that when the diode is reverse biased. So what about the voltage drop here? Well, remember that this diode is acting like a giant resistance. It has much more resistance than the 10 kilo ohm and 5 kilo ohm resistors to its left and right. Therefore, it's going to consume the entire voltage drop from 1.5 to 2.5. And notice how the plus is on the right side. So we're going to start with that 1.5. So V is equal to 1.5 minus 2.5, which is equal to one volt, negative one volt, excuse me. So there we go.